the stand of BCA Material Ancien from France with David Ackers. David, hmm. uh, is there anything you want to tell us about uh, BCA in general? I think the message to get across is it's a big company uh, so far as the reclaimed industry is concerned in France. So what you see here is a, a good overview of what we've got one hell of a lot of. Uh, and it's generally available in good quantities. So if it's the trade who are looking at you know, what perhaps they could sell on to their own clients, we can provide good continuity for most of it. And if there are people looking for their own projects, well, if they're not going to say going to dither for six months or a year, then probably what they've seen today they're still going to find available, unless it's a job lot, in which case, like everyone else, you say it's here today and gone tomorrow. Do you sell much of your stuff abroad from France, that is? Yeah, the export market is important to us and we've been keen that it be built up as a significant uh, annex to the home base sales which are mainly to France, to, to French people and increasingly the, and it's obviously good news from my point of view, is that French people are more and more restoring homes and using materials which in a way they're discovering thanks to overseas buyers of their homes, which was well documented, the Brits who buy in, in France uh, along with other countries, they do up their homes and they often they make a hash of it and often they do a wonderful job, which is the envy of the neighbourhood. So people are starting to take more and more notice and they're going to be looking for more authentic materials when, avail when available and when affordable, which of course is another issue. So the French are rediscovering their own yeah, heritage I think, materials? Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth in that. And um, if, uh, if, if that's the case, is, there a, 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 is the supply of the materials drying up or diminishing? I think it's always going to fluctuate. Uh, I'm sure it is diminishing for some, some kinds of products which are in high demand. Uh, I think you just need to look at the price, the, what, what is the most expensive, I think is, indicates that the, the, the supply is more difficult. The antique limestone flagstones, which are the real thing, obviously the prices have been going up over the years. Yeah. Uh, the antique terracotta seems to be relatively stable and we keep thinking well we're not going to get any more and it keeps coming in it's coming. It's it's, like a lot of and it is the real thing uh, yeah. so do, can you give us the French names for these things well, ça c'est des briques évidemment <laughs> des briques évidemment <laughs> évidemment c'est des briques <laughs> these that, are bricks that, too it translated that's bricks bricks and these bricks here, which aren't all the same format, which can be a gripe for specific jobs where uh, it's got to be matched up. But frankly, when we've got bricks, they are for use on rebuilds or extensions, probably of a half-timbered property, probably in Upper Normandy, probably where the bricks were mixed up in the first place. So you don't uh, sell many bricks in, in the UK? No, we don't look to sell many bricks to the UK, but we do sell bricks, uh, small amounts, when people just seem to think that's just what they want, and the price is okay, but we rarely send uh, lorry loads of them. And these, these things? These thin bricks, which are just over an inch thick, they were originally used for building uh, chimney stacks. Very often it would be the only brick built part of a, of a particular house if it's not in a brick region and where BCA is based in the in the Maine Loire region which is uh, in, the, in the northwest Loire region bricks aren't used for wall building as a rule but they are used for bread ovens and kilns and chimney stacks so that's where we get them and, and continuity is difficult and, and they tend to be bought by people who want them for firebacks and then you'd put the, the cast iron fire fire uh, back leaning against it right and we've been sending a lot of French roof tiles to projects in England and uh, people are fairly careful about making sure that they do correspond to what is required of them if they're on the, going onto a listed building so and we've got good to put these onto an English listed building in, in certain locations well we've never been involved in the process of getting permission but the people who are buying from us are and it seems to go through fine okay uh, now onto these flagstones got these uh, blue stone uh, mainly from the Belgian areas uh, these come from Arden yes Probably. and around I, I don't know around. which particular quarry there is you tend to generalize about well it's it's from one place but Europe and is full of quarries which many of which have similar stone yeah uh, 
and we can get large quantities of this at the moment. We've got several hundred square meters in stock, and it's as hard does as nails. Does it polish up? Does it? Can you actually get a polish on it? Yeah, we've. It, it does. When you get the the same stone coming from interiors from churches, it is it is highly polished and worn, and yeah. it does have a different aspect. Whereas with these, we've not made any attempt to to smarten anything up that's on display here. These are fairly raw finish. Raw. Yeah, and I can see there's uh, there's some tarmac still in places, which of course isn't so this isn't what you'd used. want, but it, you know it's war warts and all. These would have been used externally. Exter exterior. The, this batch, but the same stone, would be used in interiors as well. Okay. And the next ones? This is from the Auvergne region, so it's a volcanic stone. We call it uh, Dalvolvique, and we get small job lots of this occasionally. This is a bit like... Uh, can, you, can you see this? Uh, this is a bit like tufa. Uh, but a volcanic, it's like a volcanic version of tufa. So does that make it light? Is it fairly light? I wouldn't say it's that light. <laughs> I don't know what the density is. Oh. Uh, it'll be less than this blue stone, but it's, uh, it'll be comparable to a typical limestone, I'm sure. It is very, it, it, it's surprisingly hard. You look at it and you think, well, it's pumice, let's scratch it. Yeah. It's a lot harder than you think. Like basalt, like it's going to be volcanic, isn't it? Yeah, it is volcanic because the Auvergne is is vol ex volcanic region. Which type are these? Well, this is a hard sandstone, which I've always assumed is a grit stone. I'm no geologist, so Thornton, you're probably more up on I <laughs> geology I it, well, than okay. me. <laughs> in English, in England, we I, I would call this a quartzite. A quartzite. But uh, well, we may be, have to I change our description on the website. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but I, I'm, it looks look it looks like a quartzite. When you chip the the edges it will flake away yeah, yeah. Uh, but it isn't flint I'm sure yeah I don't know I'm not a geologist either and and granite these are obviously granites yeah uh, and this batch is fairly typical of, of batches we've got at the moment so there's some beige in it it's not that very austere gray but you have got some of the the gray in there and again is though are they street sets yes and uh, would they be from the Brittany region not necessarily they could be because we're on the edge of the Brittany region, but you, uh, in it, once the railways were in place, these sets were going all over the country. But originally, would they would they have originated from quarries in Brittany? Is there are there other yeah, granite areas in France? Yeah, uh, in Normandy, uh, near where I live, there's there's a granite region uh, near Cherbourg. Uh, there are other granite regions in France. I'm not familiar with every corner of France, but Brittany certainly was a major producer of them. And uh, around Saint Malo, for example. The, just north there were the Ile Chaussée, which were basically granite quarries, and a lot of the granite that is used on the Channel Islands is from those quarries uh, north of, uh, in the sea north of Saint Malo. Uh, and these ones? Now that, that is basalt, isn't it? I think you're right. Uh, they came from a military barracks near Mulhouse in. Lorraine, I think, or is it Alsace? Someone will correct me here. <laughs> but uh, it's a limited amount, but several hundred square meters at a go when you've got jobs, uh, jobs like that. And it's, so it's not something that we think we've always got, whereas the granite and uh, the grit stone and then these Napoleon size, which you find in front of Versailles, we've always got those as well. These are and then we've got the tiddlers here, which... Uh, oh, sorry, these are the Napoleon the size ones? No. The ones those, over there, sorry. Oh, those are Napoleon. Yeah. Okay. And it's the same stone as the ones, it's the same stone type as the ones we were discussing earlier. Okay. So, Napoleon. It's a, a grit stone or a hard sandstone. And do, do, do these ones here date from the Napoleonic era? Yeah, they. you see those in front of major public or military buildings because they were obviously the sort of the Rolls Royce size, which really crippled whoever was laying them <laughs> okay. and in front of Versailles there are acres and acres of, the, of, of identical cobblestones and we certainly don't ever get them from a, a listed building but you'll find them in railway yards and all sorts of zones like that and it's the, the, uh, the identical product. Okay and these ones here? Those are much more recent, they're probably early 20th century and I think you get similar ones around here. I'm sure they are from Brittany, they're very uniform, they're post-industrial revolution cobblestone. They're a lot cheaper and cheerful than the more antique looking ones.